Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Crowning Caliber, and we are back with another three watch collection. And this is where I find some poor soul in our company to interview. <laughs> and um, the context. Someone off the street. Yeah, someone off the street. Hey, you want to come and play <laughs> this game? And we get to pick three watches that happen to be in the office, of course. And there's usually a parameter. These are the last three watches that you will ever own, and the total collection has to be under $10,000. Justin, thank you so much for indulging me and joining me today. I will let you, I guess, introduce yourself to everybody at home. This is really difficult. This is gonna be the hardest part. The intro. Yeah. I'll work you in. Yeah, you go, yeah, do it okay. again, do it again. Hey everyone. <laughs> Jonathan's like, I told you, dude. <laughs> yeah, do we? <laughs> okay, as Nate said, my name is Justin and I've worked here for a couple of years and I work in the operations department. Awesome. And you happen, I guess, to like watches. Uh, yes, a little. Yes. A little, a little. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see what you picked and to share with you what I picked. You ready? Ready. Ready. This is the best part because I do this. That's, that's just amazing. gonna. That's just gonna. I, I got so nervous. That's just gonna stay over there. Awesome. So mm -hmm. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. uh, I there's one for sure that I was. It's interesting the similarities, but there's one for sure I thought you were gonna pick. Well, would you like to go first? Pick one of your watches and tell me why you picked it. Okay. Um, I guess we can start with the Air King. Mm. I guess I don't have to touch the watch. But I'll take it. I'll take it. You can me. take it. Yes, I, yeah, I want to. There you go. All right, so tell me about this one. It's a solid pick already. All three of my watches I pick just because they're everyday watches. I don't really like to have anything that I can't use every day. Yeah. So the Air King is a solid choice. It has the satin bracelet, so you don't have to worry about it getting too scuffed up. I love the blue dial. Yeah. Blue dial watches. Absolutely love. You know, that's an interesting point, Justin. You and I both picked everyday watches. Oh, and I yeah. think that speaks to kind of, I mean, looking at yours and what you just said, and then you can look at mine. I, you know, I've done this before, obviously. Um, and in other collections, I've put in, you know, very expensive precious metal watches because who cares? It's, it's this absurd collection. And this is still fairly absurd because 10 grand is not a small amount of money. But right. I feel like that's something you and I have in common, which is I think we're pretty practical. As practical as one can be when you're talking about luxury watches. Right. Um, you guys have the same shoes on. We pretty much do have on the same shoes. Yes, we do. Um, that is a solid first pick. Well, in keeping with that, I will show you my first pick. So, okay. not too dissimilar, I went with the Tudor Black Bay 36. So, nice. um, the baby brother to Rolex. Yes. Um, similar in size, so your Air King is a 34, that's a 36. But I kind of thought of that as like an everyday watch. So you have that brushed satin bracelet, a very simple design, time only. I love the blue dial. Yeah, the blue dial Similarly. is nice. I think the blue dial in yours is better, but I think I went with that because I prefer just a slightly larger, so I like the 36. So I love that it's closer to an Explorer, but with our price cap, getting an Explorer was not necessarily an option in the collection. So that's kind of a, um, a close second for me is the Black Bay 36, and I figured I would go with the blue dial over the traditional black dial. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. Mm, checks those boxes for me. All right, so what is your, I, looking at these, it's crazy to see how we kind of had similar thought processes. All right, so what would be the second watch in your collection? Okay, so we should do the Nomos, which is my favorite brand. Yes. Just because it's just so clean and simple. This is supposed to be for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> mm. I just love them because they're just so simple. You can wear them every day. Their straps last forever. And it's got this pretty dope suede. The, the Orion is definitely one of my favorite Nomos watches because of that case shape. Have you thought, and you've thought about actually buying, like legitimately. I think I'm going to buy that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, this actual watch, yeah. you're thinking that? I think I might buy that actual watch. Oh, there you go. So breaking news, we're not making this up. Are you serious? Nice. Yeah, this is really nice. And this this does look like the one, I don't know, like the 35 or 36, like one of the, the more yeah. modest size ones, because I know it they is, make like yeah. the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. I love the blued hands with the gold indices. Oh yeah. That is a solid pick. All right, Very so pretty. for my next watch, I was like, I want something that's like 
truly like the everyday watch, like the Tudor for mm -hmm. me. And then I kind of wanted something that was, I was gonna spend a majority of my funds on one watch that I was like, no, I definitely want that in my collection. And then one that was kind of like an extra piece. And so this is my, what I like to call my extra piece. Um, and this is the Breitling Aerospace. And I went again with a blue dial. It's a different kind of blue. I'll let you see this. So this is definitely a more of an out there piece, but there's so many things that are great about this watch. So it's a Breitling Super Quartz. So already it's, you know, practical. It's more of an everyday watch. It has literally every feature under the sun in it. It has a rotating bezel, but I mean, it has like a countdown timer. It has a calendar. It has a chronograph. It has a stopwatch. I mean, it has just insane amount of features. It's a titanium case, about as big as I would feel comfortable going. I think it's like a 42, but it's like 10 millimeters thick. So it's a super thin watch. It's easy to wear. And I mean, it's just kind of like, you're gonna throw that on and not have to think about it. And so that is my second pick, a Breitling Super Quartz. Very nice. And yeah, it's, I mean, the, the functionality that this crown has is pretty crazy. It's got the quartz analog mix on the dial. It's just a, it's a unique piece. It's not something I feel like you see often on people's wrists. And so I was like, oh, I wanna add that to my collection. Nice. All right, what you got for me? Okay, so my third one is the Speedy Reduced. Oh, you're on a first name basis, Speedy Reduced. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Speedy Reduced. Why did you go with the old Speedmaster Automatic Reduced? Well, obviously the moon watches are amazing, but the cases are a little too big for my taste, you know? Mm -hmm. So a smaller case. And price-wise, it's... Oh yeah, super affordable. Yeah. Um, In comparison. Yes, in comparison. It's right. like always, yeah. we always have to kind of preface, it's like, oh yeah, it's super affordable right. <laughs> from the luxury watch standpoint. I would prefer a leather strap, I think, yeah. to the bracelet, but other than that, <clears throat> just for everyday use, I don't know if the bracelet would be really practical. Yeah, this, I feel like, yeah, some of these older Omega bracelets kind of feel dated. Um, so I agree with you on that. Well, all right, so um, my final watch, <laughs> this is an Omega Speedmaster, um, and mine is Honest Strap, and yes. I went with, this is uh, like hands down one of my favorite watches, and that is the first Omega in space. Oh yeah. Um, See, this is beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing. But that had, that watch is far and away the most expensive of the three. Mm -hmm. Like when I sat out and was like, okay. This is what you led with. That is what I led <laughs> with, and I was like, how can I build around that? Right, um, that was a really good choice. And that has the just classic Speedmaster movement in it. It is a little smaller, so it's like a 39 and change, so it works well on my smaller wrist. But it is also super classic, like you said, it's a Speedmaster. And so um, I felt confident. I was like, if I have this in my collection, I can get like a time only watch, kind of check both the boxes and then have that extra piece that I wanted. So I could talk on and on about the force, but to me that is like, that's oh, yes. where it's at. This is a beautiful watch. I love this strap. Yeah. If you had to take one of my watches and sub out one of yours in your collection, what would you take? So you have to tr trade one of yours for one of mine. A agnostic of price. Why? If it, why, if you're like, <laughs> I went through all this work. Is there a um, watch of mine that you, you have to? This is, this is not up to, for debate. Yeah. And I'm gonna take one of yours. Alex did this. He did. Which is your favorite in my three? I like this twist. Yeah. yeah. So you have to choose one. I, <laughs> so I know. I could just switch out. <laughs> yes. I know what I would choose. <laughs> Oh, um, mine? From yours. You're keeping the Novos. I was well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> so I was thinking I would just switch out the Omegas because, I mean, it's basically what I would want anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so you're taking you're my gonna, speedy. You're gonna take my Air King. Oh, I'm taking your Air King. Yeah. And of course, then we've probably exceeded the ten thousand yeah. dollar budget. We did. We did. That's and that's why we chose these. Yeah, that's why we chose these. <laughs> I understand that we're talking luxury items and practicality and luxury is somewhat of an oxymoron, but... Um, well, it's quality over quantity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and you can see that in both these collections for sure. Why are you buying that Nomos? I'm a huge fan of Nomos, like I said. They're clean, simple. I could wear it every day. You probably will. Couldn't necessarily wear it to a dinner party, but I don't go to a lot of dinner parties. <laughs> Wait, why couldn't you wear it to a dinner party? I just, I don't think that the strap is, so you get like, strap. you know, if you're wearing so like a dress and you're like out, you know, like. So. Yeah, so, but you can easily put on a black strap. Yeah, but I just, the leather mm -hmm. is just not really 
with something. I mean, you could dress it up. Yeah. I just don't know if I necessarily would. Yeah. So all three of these are watches that I would buy. <laughs> so for Rolex, I would buy an Air King mm -hmm. and an Omega, I would buy the Reduced. Yeah. So that's kind of how I picked them. I think that's legitimately... Like what I would buy and the order would be the Nomos, the Omega, and then the Rolex, just because the Rolex is the most expensive yeah. and I would have to save the longest for it. That... <laughs> so practical. Um, yeah. I think it's... That is so, like, indicative of who you are in the sense that the three watches you picked are, like, legitimately the what three I watches would, that yeah. you would buy. Where, like, the watches that I picked... The Speedmaster First Omega in Space, like that is a watch that I will one day own. Like I absolutely love that watch. But as I said, like the Black Bay 36 to me was me checking that Rolex Explorer box because right. in this term, I couldn't get that. And Yeah, my tastes are a little less. <laughs> well, I'm here just to dream. Um, this but is I think my that, dream. <laughs> yeah, th th and those are, I mean, that's not for nothing. That's still like... Eight thousand plus dollars worth of watches. Yeah, like, that is an dream absurd for me. amount of money. <laughs> and I would never own more than two of them, honestly, at a time, because then, like, one would get left out. To that point, though, I would you, trade it in. Yeah. The fun of it is the three watch collection, but in the practical sense, in the sense of Justin, she <laughs> she should have just shown up with two watches, and she's like, I'm only actually going to wear two. <laughs> That's true. So which two? Which two watches? If you only could have two, which two would you have? Oof. I don't know. That's really tough. Because I really want to say the Nomos and the um, the Rolex, but but only for a little while, and then I would <laughs> switch it out. Which one are you going to switch out? I, I assume the Rolex. The Rolex, yeah. yeah. I think if I was to take two, I would take the Tudor and the Omega. I mean, if, we're yeah. if, if I had my druthers, if I was to take two, I would take the Omega and your Rolex. Oh, but what about the Nomos? No, Who's that's for that? you, not me. No, I was just thinking that's a really good point. Like those are two great watches. Oh, then you're thinking, you're like, you know what? That may be my collection. Um, I do think it is interesting. This has been the most practical viewpoint on this, and it's it's definitely taught me something about you and the fact that like to the end of the day, you're practical, and that's a good thing. I'm, I, I share that too, um, and it comes through in your collection. It comes through in the fact that you're like, no, Nathan, these are the watches that I want. These are <laughs> yeah, the, this is it. This, this is the collection I'd want, and I think that's. That's still extremely aspirational, and those are really good choices. Thank you. Yeah. Well, hey, everyone. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this. We love getting to do three watch collections. I'm so glad I could pull Justin away from her day job, um, her day-to-day -day work, and um, have a little bit of fun. And so I'm hoping you guys learned something um, about me, but more importantly, about Justin. And everyone, thanks for watching.